Thank you that as we turn to the pages of your word today in Ephesians chapter 3, 8, to 8 through 15, your word is coming to us with simplicity, with clarity, and with the power of the Spirit of God as we talk about the purpose of the mystery. Give you praise and give you honor in Jesus' name. And everybody say it, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So this week we are going to look at the purpose of the mystery. Hallelujah. The what? The purpose of the mystery. Just a minute. Hallelujah. Last week we looked at the mystery revealed. Now we want to look at the purpose of the mystery. The purpose of God in the mystery. Very important we understand this. Because I want to move us from the place of Christ in me, the hope of glory to the purpose of it. Okay? Are you hearing me? Yes. Now, before I get into Ephesians chapter 3 and verses 8, the, the, you cannot know the purposes of God without understanding the ways of God. Hallelujah. Amen. That we cannot know the purposes of God without understanding the ways of God. Hallelujah. And I want to paint that picture before. I want to give us an introduction before I come into what God has in store for us. In Colossians chapter 1 from verses 9, the Bible says, For this reason we also from the day we heard of it have not ceased to pray and make special requests for you, asking that you may be filled with a full, deep, and clear knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom. Then it says, in comprehensive insight into the ways and the purposes of God. Very important. Into the what? The ways and the purposes. Now that's a perfect balance. Hallelujah. Many of us are, are filled with one dimension. We know the ways of God. But even in that way, it is not revelational. It is assumption. Okay? The ways of God. I'll give an example. The comprehensive insight into building, for example, into the way of building his church. That's the way. And the purpose thereof of what? Of building church. Those are two different things. The way the church is built and the purpose. Yes, you want to build the church, but to what end? Hallelujah. To what, what? Amen. So there is a way to build the church, but to what end? Because some of us may be saying, ha, if I can get only 100 people and they give a tithe of like mm, 20,000, I mean 20,000, so we are trying to say church, but the purpose is the what? The basket. Are you making sense? What's the way of God, okay, when it comes to your marriage? When, no, what's the way of God in marriage? And what's the purpose of marriage? Are you seeing it? Those are two different things. The ways of marriage and the purpose of marriage. For example, I'm going to read for us the purpose of marriage. And you may be a nigga, no one knows the purpose of marriage. But you want to get married. Me want to get married. Shaka papa, shaka papa, shaka papa. Hallelujah. But you're praying for marriage without understanding the end of marriage. 
and you ask them, why do you like that guy? He, he takes care of me. He has six packs. That's, he has, that one has defined the end. Somebody looks at Roman Reigns like about, oh, yeah. They have defined the what? The end of marriage. Let me show you the purpose of marriage. Hallelujah. Malachi chapter 2 verses 15. God, not you, made marriage. His spirit inhabits even the smallest details of marriage. Hey, the spirit of God, even the, where the stockings are thrown. <laughs> hey, even where the stockings are thrown. He inhabits. He's very interested how you react to it. <laughs> Even that breath in the morning. <laughs> Woo! Marina. He inhabits the smallest details in what? Marriage. Now, many of us are inhabiting the bigger ones, the sex, the finances, and everything. Mm -mm, that's tokens. Hallelujah. This is not me, it's the Bible. I'm just defining for us the smallest details. His spirit inhabits, dwells in it. Then it says, and what does he want from marriage? What does he want from marriage? He, children of God. What does God want from marriage? For you to have sex? For you to have, enjoy and build a good house? Children of God. Godly offspring. That's why when this lady, this baby comes, it's a different thing altogether. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Hey, for you think it's... And every time you are fighting in marriage, what? We don't have sex. There is no money. There is one. And that's not the purpose of marriage. And you're fighting over things that are not the end of marriage. That's why when my wife that cannot articulate a language or my language to my son, that cannot be my wife. Are you, are you getting me? Hey, children of God, that's what? Hey, that's it. Nagamba. So guard the spirit of marriage within you. Don't cheat on your spouse. The, the context for these ones were for them. You guys, the Messiah is going to come. All right, don't cheat. Don't go and get, don't get a Jew and get to a, a Gentile. Just keep it there. Don't, 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 don't cheat. Hallelujah. So he has defined the end of Marriage, the purpose of marriage. Now, somebody walks in marriage without the end in mind. Am I making sense? Now, are you seeing the difference between the ways of God and the purposes of God? Hmm? I have come to realize that the way of God precedes the purpose. That even though it's the purpose that starts, the purpose that starts and precedes. But it is important to first go to the end of the matter. And I've talked about that thing since this year. Come first to the end. Yeah? Of a matter. First define the end from here. First understand the experience. First experience marriage in the realm of the spirit. <laughs> Are you getting me? Then you come and begin to walk in the way thereof. Take it. Now you can say it. So if God wants that, if it's a child godly offspring, then I can begin to walk with that end in mind. Imagine and visualize yourself. If, if it dies 10 years from now and we are all here, what would you want Pastor Adrian to say about you? So you have gone to the purpose. You've gone to the end. Then you begin to walk that. Am I making sense? So when we say, when we say the comprehensive, that intensive examination specified by... It's, 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 it's like a... An, an examination that you're going through. So the way is how something is done. How it is what? Done. And how it happens. That's the way. How. How to build a church. How to get married. Hallelujah. God gives you the how. Okay, you get a, a, a believer. Husbands love your wives, blah, blah. Oh, that's the how. But the purpose is the anticipated outcome. That is intended and guides your planned action. 
That when you see the end in mind, then you come back and it begins to guide your planned actions. So you have the ways of God and then the purpose of God. You cannot know the outcome without the means. Hallelujah. You cannot know the outcome without the process, without the structure. Very important. That's why, pastors, we need to preach the process. We need to preach principles. Yes, you want to be rich, but do you tithe? You get the point? Yes, you want to be rich, but to what end? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, that's why I can give an example. A but I'm building, yeah? Uh, they ha they have a vision. Bringing life to light to the world through the power of the gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the word mystery. That is our end. Hallelujah. That when Sharon walks in, she's going to hear that. Bringing life to light. The way to light. The life of God in you. So if I'm preaching... I, there's a way I can instill the life of Sharon in her, the life of God in her, for her to be start to bring that life out of her life. You understand? Too light that when people look at Susan, they look at the light. That she saved it. Clap for me. Mm. You, you say, that's bringing the life of Christ in her to light. That's the end of her other ministries. And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. So I preach Christ in you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? That's the end. Now, if that's the end, Pastor Adrian, then how are we going to go? The way. Revealing Christ through your bread of life. Demonstrating his power through prayer evangelism. So we have your bread of life and we have the ash moment. Are you seeing it? Yeah. Do I make sense now? Yeah. Do I make sense now? So, you cannot know the outcome. You have to define the means. I hope I'm making sense. So, what is the structure of marriage in you? What's the end? Have you defined the structures in marriage? Are they guided by planned actions? Hallelujah. Those that are married, I'm, I'm very serious. Those that are tending to get married, you, you have to define it. Am I really making sense? So, how a thing is done will give you what? The end of the matter. Listen to me, guys. So go to the end. For everything you do, go to the end. First go to the end. Jesus says, for this cause I have come. It is to this end. He was telling the, telling hatred that he wanted to crucify him. No, but I was not crucified. I was not what? I have come because Jesus died before he died. You are blessed before you are. That's what I'm saying. First go to the end. I am the head and not the tail. You have gone to the end. I am above only and not beneath. Then you come and look for a job. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you're coming to work, you're working with an end in mind. Glory to God. Amen. You see the point? So you've dis you've, you, have designed, you have defined that. Hallelujah. In other words, I'm saying begin with the purpose of God in mind. For everything you do, begin with that. The purpose of God in mind. And then walk the journey. The way of God is how. Oh? Huh? And the purpose is why. Why do you do the things that you do? Because the thing behind the thing is the thing. Hallelujah. Why is planet with Sharon? The thing behind the thing is the thing. And it always come out in your relationship. So when somebody, when somebody wants to take you out. <laughs> hallelujah. Whatever that was. So listen to me before I go. It is important you define the why before you come to the how. Pastor Adrian, why? Why? After I've, I've written the why. And some of you, some of you just go back and begin to write the why. Why am I in other ministries? Why am I in this relationship? Why am I in this job? Why am I alive in a generation like this? Why am I 
Why didn't I come in, 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 in the Old Testament era? Why didn't I, God, why didn't you take me to the one of the millennium where you just, when I see me, just, you understand what I'm saying? So when you ask yourselves why, now many of us are point blank because we've never asked ourselves, why am I here on earth? It will determine the husband you get married to, <laughs> the job you get, how you spend your money, how you dress. Today I was, today I was walking, a lady passed me, she was half naked. <laughs> and, every, and everyone was looking at her. She grabbed the attention of everyone. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit was saying, Hey, someone hear you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, now, to what end is the mystery revealed? Are you getting me now? Why Christ in you? That's my sermon for us today. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Yekile bakase, zipo katala. I have an open why. Hallelujah. Amen. Clap for me. Why? Why? Christ in me. Now I know that by now I have already tuned Sharon in the sense of now she understands the mystery. Because if I gave her the why, she would not understand any clear. Sometimes God does these things in a mysterious way. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to see the why today. And you may not understand it, but it will sink in. Like how you began hearing your bread of life. I mean, your Christ in you. Never talk about Christ. Christ. Now, even the purpose, we're going to start like that. But we're going to talk about it. Because somebody said that they are seated in the heavenly places, but they do not know that that is the purpose. Eh? For them, they are only just seated. They are those who are seated in the heavenly places, and there are those who are walking in the heavenly places. No one has I am not Now, what for college? Let's go to the summon. <laughs> verse 8. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 8. Paul now starts by saying, To me, remember why we picked from last week? To me, who I am less than the least of all the saints. This grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of what? Christ. Okay, let's first start with Agamba. I was the least of all the saints. But this grace, to do what? To preach among the Gentiles, the, uh, the field, right? The unsearchable riches of Christ. Unsearchable. Riches of Christ. The Amplified Version says the unending, the boundless, the fathomless, the un uncalculable, and exhaustless riches of Christ. They are ex you can't exhaust the riches of Christ. Now, come back. Wealth which no human being could have searched out. Hallelujah. Paul Agamanti, I am preaching the wealth that no human being can search. I am preaching the wealth that no science can find. I am preaching the wealth that is beyond human discovery. That even though you go to the deepest, the scientists can go wherever they want to go, but they cannot find this wealth. And yet this wealth is in you. Hi. Am I making sense? Hallelujah. So this is not in the realm of man's discovery. Hallelujah. It's not in the realm of science. Hallelujah. Because of Christ, he says, there are blessings that cannot be measured. Guys, okay, do you understand the blessings of Christ? Blessed with every spiritual blessing. It can't be measured. We can measure the blessings of the government. We can measure the blessings of Mosevini's son. But we can't measure the blessings of, of, of Sharon, the son of God. That's not what I'm saying. Now, if, if, if Mosevini's son passes here, even the one... 
Even the one of God is bowing. You just don't know who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So Paul is saying, I want to preach the endless treasures available to us in Christ. I first paint it with that picture. You have it. It is in you. It is what? In you. But eye has not seen, nor what ear has heard, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. They are beyond your mind discovery. But they are revealed to us by the Spirit of God. So Paul is saying, buddy, for me, I'm not, I, don't preach what, I don't preach what money can buy. I cannot give you what money can buy. Pastor Adrian, I, I can't preach that. But I'm going to get a visa. No, anyone can get a visa. You go to Sudan, you get your visa, right? Me, I'm going to preach what the Holy Spirit only can give you. And what the Holy Spirit can reveal to you. Because they are the unsearchable riches of what? Of Christ. Am I making sense? So the unsearchable riches of Christ, they are revealed to us by the what? The Spirit. And you have been given the Spirit of revelation. Guys, we must understand this. Paul says, pray that God may give you the Spirit of what? Revelation. Because without revelation, you cannot understand the unsearchable riches of Christ. So they are not searched. They are revealed by the Spirit. Hallelujah. The blessings in Christ are what? Revealed. God is not such. God is what? Revealed. The gospel is not, not an assumption. The gospel is a revelation. Am I making sense? So, listen to me. If you're coming here and you want me to, to locate you, eh? Pastor, locate me now. Locate me now. Ah, you're in the wrong church. Hallelujah. I want to preach what the Holy Spirit can do in your life. Yes. Hallelujah. The message version says, When it came to presenting the message to people who had no background in God's way, I was the least qualified of any of the available Christians. Now, some of us, where God has picked you, eh? You've been the least qualified. You were the least qualified in that school. You were the least qualified in your community. You were the least qualified in your clan. Even in your family. You're the one? But God is saying, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. That one who is the least qualified. You're going to call that You must understand who we are. Hallelujah. Four, five, ten years from now, they'll look at you and they'll be like, you were the least qualified. But let me tell you something. This gospel that we are preaching is going to elevate us and put us in places where we will say we don't deserve it. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, glory to God. This is what the gospel can do. They look at Chumu Hendra after three years, they'll be like, Bash was the least qualified. They don't understand you. Some of you, even your husbands, will fear you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Paul was the least qualified. Then he says, God saw to it that I was equipped, but you can be sure that it had nothing to do with my natural abilities. God is going to elevate you, and people will say, How did Deborah get there? Hallelujah. So I receive it. But then, when I'm preaching, I'm prophesying. It's coming forth the word of God. Some of you, God is going to elevate you and you look at yourself and go, it's not even your credentials. Hallelujah. And you're standing with guys who have gone ahead of you in terms of education and money, but they say, to Agaloyo. Hallelujah. I went to, an, when I was going to get submitted to my spiritual father, they had a meeting. They had a meeting. And Pastor Sam, who was given to me, and Literally, they were going in the meeting, and no one has ever taken their attention. But when I stepped there, they say, "Ah, this is Pastor Adrian has come to submit." Pastor Sam looked at me and said, ah, "There is something about you, eh? There is something because the first thing he saw me, there is something about you." But come, you understand what I'm saying? Hey, least qualified. The other guys have their cars by then. They are building their big, but he saw me. Njagaloyo, glory to God. And this guy, you couldn't meet him. Because it's very busy. The ones, by the way, I'm, 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 I'm telling the truth. The ones who submitted the thing is some, some have not yet met him. And I met him in three weeks. List, quality, fight. And the ones who came came in their cars. 
with a big ministry. Let me do something. This is what God is going to do in our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So Paul is saying, I am the least of the saints. He says in 1 Timothy 1 verse 15, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the chief. Imagine, Paul calls himself the chief of all sinners. Hallelujah. Now there is that nasty story in high school. <laughs> That were, that were in, <laughs> you, you, you had to, you had to brag with how many girls you have. So we're in a competition. We're in a competition. I sing at you. So you go and vibe and vibe. I said, I don't know you ever Now, when you get served, you'll be like, name would you kill her? I ever sing Hallelujah. You understand what I'm saying? Now, Paul is saying, Christ came to save sinners. But of all those sinners, eh? but there's something he says, then in verse 16 he says, however, for this reason I obtain mercy that in me for Jesus Christ may show all long sufferings as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him, as a pattern for Adrian, who is going to believe in Jesus Christ for everlasting life? No, as God knows how to qualify the least, He knows how to elevate those with no natural abilities, and that is His pattern. God is simply showing that this is my pattern. This is the way that I do it. Where they call you the most least, where they say that you don't have the natural abilities, that this is the pattern, people. It's a pattern of what? Of grace. So don't look on yourself. Embrace for what God has in store for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Embrace it. Embrace it. Embrace it. Embrace it. Embrace what God can do to you by grace through faith. Yes, you may be the least in your family, but grace through faith. Yes, you may be the least in your community, but grace through faith. So all I need is what? Faith. Paul says, I am the least of the apostles, but I am what I am by the grace of God. Therein is the pattern. You are defined by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So you can be the least in your clan, but that doesn't define you. You, you may have no natural abilities as you're going to sit with those guys in the interview. But that doesn't define you. You may not have the credentials. But that doesn't define you. You may even have the money. But that doesn't what? Define you. What defines you is the grace of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is the pattern of God. Amen. So, let's come back to the untouchable riches of Christ. Yeah? There are things that can never be found in the realm of prayer. I wish we could understand this. Eh? <laughs> men that are seeking, but there are things that are found to men that are positioned because they are unsearchable. Because they are the unsearchable. So you, you, can't, you can't seek them, right? You can't pray for them, right? But you can only be positioned. Hey, hey. I wish you could understand this mystery. Huh. I wish you can, because it may bypass somebody. Somebody can go to the prayer mountain. And I'll, and I'll give an example. You can go to the prayer mountain to look for the anointing. Hallelujah. Now, your neighbor has the anointing that you're looking for. But you've gone to the prayer. Now, this is why people are failing in life. Get me right. Nova, mu, 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 okay. I want to use the anointing. Let me use Amazonian resin. Okay? You have no power in your house. You have no power in your house. But your neighbor has what? Power. Isn't it? Now, you want power. You go to the prayer mountain. Father, power. Power, sakata, libro, kata, zindeba. Power in my house. Let me tell you something. Although you pray for 600 hours, 
the power will not come. Because that's not the way God works. That's pride. God says, mm -mm. but by the virtue of my principle, go to your neighbor who has power and gets and connect. Is that wisdom? Going to the prayer is expensive. You won't drive your fuel. You won't even waste your time. Just walk to the neighbor and say, neighbor, are you kidding me? So you want to go and search for something that is unsearchable. Hallelujah. Now, what does that mean in, a phys in, in, in reality? Submission. And I'll come back there. The perfect positioning is submission. And I'm going to come back there a little bit because I, there is something that I want to say there. And Yeah. Now, guys, but I haven't gone to the purpose eh? because it's verse by verse. That man who went to the prayer mountain, all he needed was to submit to the one who had the power. And after submitting, just connect and the power will do what? Come in your house. Psalms 133 verses 1, don't miss this. The Bible says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil. What is oil? The anointing, right? The precious oil. <laughs> Some of you are looking for the oil of wealth. The oil of a successful marriage. The oil of raising good what? Children, right? Precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron running down on the edge of its what? Garments. So this is the anointing upon, uh, upon Aaron's life from here and it is flowing, right? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now, here is submission. I just come and I go under the what? Aaron, right? What will the anointing find me? That's the perfect position. To tap into the anointing. When you submit under, the anointing flows. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. But that is perfect submission. That's why it is important. If you submit to a higher reference. If somebody in your neighborhood knows how to make one million sittings, why you go to the prayer mountain to believe God for one million sittings? Go to this person and let them teach you how to make one million. Isn't that simple? He has the anointing of one million shillings. But for because you will pray for Rika Pala Kozakata and it won't work. And that's a problem with many of us today. Power shakata, but no power. Shikapa, no power. And God is saying, no, you, you, go and learn from that person. You have, a, you, have a, you have a neighborhood who you've heard of their marriage. They are doing well. They are godly. And, and for you there, let me go to the prayer mountain. I saw one there. No, just go to them and let them teach you. That is perfect submission. Things will, things will not come to you because of going to the prayer mountain to pray. Things will come because you are. Positive. And the anointing that is upon their life flows in you. That is how God has designed us. Amen. Amen. So certain anointings and graces will come because you are simply submitted to that person or because you are positioned right. Hallelujah. Those that are submitted to me know what I'm talking about. You talk, I talk. You begin talking about light. The language begins to work. Hallelujah. And by the way, we are going far because I'm going far. Amen. Now, somebody can say, it is me who's supposed to go far, whether you want it or not. I am going far. And because I'm going far, you what? Deborah is dying with it. Hallelujah. She wants to be the one to go to the prayer mountain and, and go fast. Hallelujah. Amen. But then no one can be deeper than me here. Tell Balimba. You can't be deeper. The anointing. You submit under. <laughs> That's why <laughs> if, if Sharon is more deeper than, sorry, uh, than whether, he, whether he knows the law, if it's time for this one to speak, Sharon keeps quiet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You understand what I'm saying? So, guys, it is important we understand, okay? So, Paul saw himself as least in the apostles. But let's go. Now, 
The riches of the gospel are here spoken as the riches of Christ. Understand that. The riches of the gospel, they are spoken as the riches of Christ. So they are talking about the gospel. The gospel is rich. Amen. This thing that we read every day, this thing is rich. This thing saves your marriage. This thing transforms your life. This thing elevates you. The Bible says the gospel is the power of God. Some of us read it to get married. Some of us read it to get a husband. But some of us are like, no, 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 no. We want to go deeper than that. Hallelujah. The Bible says, however, we, we possess this precious in us, the precious gospel. It's, 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 it's the treasure in the what? In the earthen vessels, the divine light of the gospel. Do you know what you possess in the inside of you? The unsearchable riches of Christ are in you. Which is the what? The gospel. Now many of us, etikamba chiriwa, chiriwa. On our heads. Te chiriwa? Hallelujah. Amen. And these unsearchable riches are revealed to us by the spirit of revelation. You sit under ministry, they've never pointed you to the mystery. Hallelujah. You pray one year, two years, three years, and you come out and somebody asks you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. You understand what I'm saying? They are there. Glory to God. So, listen to me. When you're reading, Pray for the spirit of revelation because they are the unsearchable riches of Christ. Have you ever opened your Bible? No, so man, let me take it. And even get bored. Hallelujah. I've never been there. <laughs> but if you're here and you're in that level, hey, 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 Never born. Song of songs. For you sing breasts. <laughs> Hallelujah. If it's not revealed to you, you will see breasts. Darling, my kisses, you will go back to the movie. Ah! And yet, Solomon is. God the Father, the Shunammite woman is Israel, expressing their love. Solomon is Jesus, the Shunammite woman is the what? Is the church, and they're expressing their love. But Solomon can still be an attraction of the world to the Shunammite woman, because the Shunammite woman wasn't Solomon's wife. Eh? But Solomon is coming in the splendor of his wealth, and the woman said, do I leave this one? At a innocent. Ngende wa Solomon a innocent. But it is in there. No, so much all over. Except by the spirit of revelation. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. ha. I have opened it. Hallelujah. Am I making sense? A Solomon sank in by them. <laughs> oh. Do not awaken love if it so desires. Eh? What does that mean? Verse 9, quickly, verse 9. So he says, to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ, right? Now, verse 9, he says, and to make all see. Woo! And to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages had been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ. And to make all see. Hallelujah. And to enlighten all men. Hallelujah. To make plain the plan of Christ of the Gentiles. So Paul is saying, here is my thing. I want to make all men see. Hallelujah. When somebody comes to this church, my purpose is to make them see the life. Hallelujah. Because you can go and they don't make you see and see something else. Ignisius Fatus. One of me, I told you, one of us came in Kilgab. Nenga, I was not making them see. But he's saying, this is the thing to make all men 
see. The Greek word there is for titso. To bring to light. To give light. Right? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. That is what he's saying. I want to bring all them to light. I want to bring this mystery to light. That they can see. I want to bring Christ in them. The hope of glory to light. I have, I say, is we bring life to light. Am I making sense? Now, what is that light? 2 Corinthians chapter 4 from verses 3. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. I want to come back to that later. To arise and shine. Somebody was saying arise and shine. But what is the light? It's the light. What's the light? Of what? Of marriage? The light of business? The light of the gospel. Which gospel? Of demonology? The gospel of what? Of the glory. I mean, of the knowledge of what? Of the glory of Christ. That does the shall have the knowledge of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 6 says, For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. But when you we, when, when we say darkness, we are not saying evil. We are not saying, Banang, that guy is, 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 is uh, in that place, they kill people. No, it's not the deeds. It's the state. Darkness is the, the, is, is the, is, is the how do you call it? Those, who's, those, who, those who have been blinded from the light, right? Okay? When we say darkness, the world is dark. Right? The world is in darkness. Why? They, they, they are blinded to the light. Yeah? And who is the light? Jesus. So when we say the world is in darkness, we are meaning that they do not know Jesus. They have not seen the light. That's why if you want to draw me, I'm going to come back there. If you say that I am the light, then men should come to you because they need the light. Because they are in what? Darkness. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? So you point people to the light, isn't it? Who is Jesus Christ? So Paul is saying, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, once they see it, it means that their light has come. And I want to define for you that light. Hallelujah. But am I teaching? Oh, it is going off our heads. You'll get to me as you listen. Hallelujah. So he says, to bring to light, to make all men see the light. But what is that light here? The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 6, six from verses 1, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Whose light? Your, somebody say, my light. My light. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. What's that glory? The glory of the knowledge of what? Jesus Christ. Don't miss this point. Okay? For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people the world, right? The, but the Lord will rise, arise over you. And his glory, which is the gospel, will be seen upon you. It is a re, Once it is revealed to you, then he will rise over you. Then verse 3, he says, The Gentiles shall come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your rising. He wants to draw men to you. The Gentiles shall come to your light. Wait a minute. You want to start up a business. The Gentiles shall come to you. Light. You want to draw men to you. What do they need? Light. Now, the light here is your revelation of God. Hallelujah. Your revelation of who? Of God. And I'll come back there because it is important you understand. So if you're going to buy your product, just have the light. If you're meant to come to your ministry, just have the light. Susan say they see the light and they do what? That's all you need. And I'm going to show you why, why people are going to, why this thing is going to get you out of poverty. Hallelujah. Not you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Gentiles shall come to your light. Talking about Amen. You understand? Amen. The heathens. The heathens. The ones who don't have, they will look at the light and they will follow you. This thing is very 
important that this is the thing that can get you out of out of your state out of your luck god six the verse three, the gentiles shall come to your light the light of the gospel of the glory of christ i i i i'll come there that's why i have this vision is to bring life to light am i making sense now for some of you who do not know this vision let me explain for you where i got it because this is an opportunity for me to share Amen. Second Timothy chapter 1 verses 8. I want to read it quickly. Hear me. Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. First of all, it's the gospel according to the power of God. Now, if you're not demonstrating power, Hallelujah. A rat comes. <laughs> A rat Cockroach? <laughs> I was sharing with, 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 with somebody that they couldn't believe me. I was busy praying. Rashakata, Siketele, bro, in my room. They was God told me, open your eyes and look left. And I looked and there was a snake. Now, if it was those days, my, 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 my. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. But three days before, I had a dream when snakes, you understand what I'm saying? When snakes were, you know that you're going to end up like they're full of snakes. Hallelujah. Snakes. Ah. I'm like, oh, this vision. Ah. Let me start. Because I knew something is going to happen. So I began, I went back again and took myself there again. Because in the dream I was under to run, I was afraid. I woke up in the morning, I was very, I was like, God, no, I can't be part with myself. I went back, shakata, I took my spirit there in the dream. And I'm visioning myself, kidding them. That is how I pray by God. Going to the end of my life. So as I was praying two days later, a, 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 a gusne comes. And then you can in a chamas. You know what I'm saying? Now, those days I would what? I would drive. Huh? Am I making sense? Now, you're going to find Christians who are praying. <laughs> and a demon shows up. It's a true story. I was there at Toto Church. And we were praying. And we did not know that this beautiful woman had some demons. The demons are first. So, for me as the leader, I was like, okay, Papa, as I turn my eyes like this, I was the only one, behold, with a demon. <laughs> my Christian friends are one. But when they say, you see the Bible, you guys, guys, this thing of saying the Bible says, you will be tested. The demons are first. If a man walked and said, those who are in Christ, stay. I want to kill you. You can go out. And save your life. How many will stay? And don't answer me, eh? but it's real. Eh? If somebody walked in right here with a gun, <laughs> if, if you're for Christ, stay and die. Don't answer me. It's you and your God. <laughs> I am above. I am above. <laughs> Now, okay, if a gentleman walked in here, that's the first one. Maybe you, you failed it, maybe. But for me, I'll die, <laughs> just so you know by now. So, I'm serious. <laughs> so, if, 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 if somebody walked in here and somebody gave a story, which is true, a gentleman walked, he had gone to war, he lost his arm, right? So he walked and said, guys, you are believers? Pray for my arm to come back. Pray for my arm to what? Now you see. No, there's now you see. Do you really believe God? But me and to provoke me, but I'm very serious, Susan. Me and me and God to provoke me. I want guys who can provoke me, sorry. I dare to believe. Hallelujah. Christians didn't pray. Because they didn't believe in the God that for you, how many would pray? If Susan woke up in the morning and said, guys, now let's believe for this lady. I'm just giving an example. How many would say, let's, yes, let's do it? How many? How many would say, that? I think you love that? But I've never tried it. Shut up. Ah, ah, ah. Where was I? I'm showing uh, the gospel according to the power of, of God. By the way, if you're not demonstrating power, you guys, you're lying to yourself. And it's as simple as it, 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 who heals? Is it you? The Christ in you. 
and the purpose of the mystery. Zijia. Now, he says, where was I? Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before, the, before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and says, and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. He has brought life and immortality to what? To light through the gospel. As I say, we bring life to light through the gospel. The word they have brought is to make all men see. Life there is the way. Life. Light there is to make all men see. So brought and light are one and the same. So it says to make all men see the life of Christ to make all men see. Hallelujah. Yeah. That when they will see today, tomorrow they see like you keep the, the, Gentiles shall, the Gentiles shall come to my light, the Gentiles, and the kings shall come to the brightness of my what? Shining. That you shine brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. There is a place where Gentiles will come to your light. There is a place where kings will come to the brightness of your shining. So you can attract both the Gentiles and attract both the light. All of you do just keep shining brighter, brighter. The men of Israel will be like, mm. Hallelujah! Amen. Am I making sense? Yeah. So how are we are saying we bring life to the light. Am I making sense? Hallelujah. Verse 10 is what I need to bring us. Hey, so what's the purpose of the mystery? To what end is Christ revealed in you? Now, this is a place where I want us to start going. And it sounds very easy. Verse 10 it says, here's the purpose. To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, verse 11, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Listen to me. I even said that some of you have been like, to move it together. The manifold, to the intent that the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church. To where? To the heavenly places. Hallelujah. So what is the purpose of the mystery? What is the intent of the mystery? Why is Christ revealed in you? Paul is saying that the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by you to the principalities. Where? In the heavenly places. That the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by you to the principalities in the heavenly places. That by the manifold wisdom of God may be made known by you to the principalities in the heavenly Present. That the manifold wisdom of God may be made known by you, the church. To where? To the principalities in the Heavenly places. That is the purpose of why Christ is revealed in you. And I know that I'm going to take it there. Not to cast out their boats. Not to talk to poverty. Come on, I am rich. We buy. No. Not to send away witchcraft. Not for empowers our work. Eh? Eh, 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 eh. Christ in me, the hope of my days. Christ in me. Ah, no, 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 no. God expects you to be above it. By the virtue that you're first in Christ, you are above witchcraft. So why was your time? But I like witchcraft. Eh, 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 eh. Christ is in me. No, why are you telling which of Christ is in you? You don't know who you are. And, and you're praying with Christ in you. See, Nietzsche? See, Nico, Nietzsche? See, Nico, Nietzsche? I'm, I'm not a hen, but I'm what? I'm not a hen, but I'm what? I'm not a hen. I'm a he. I'm not a hen. I'm a Nico. I'm not a hen. Hey, Christ is in me. I'm not a hen. Hey. Who told you that you are a him? Was that why Christ was revealed? Why are you fighting with what Christ already defeated? 
Why are you fighting with what Christ already defeated? Hey! Why are you going for deliverance? Why are you... <coughs> Satan? Hey! But Christ is in you. Wait a minute. You mean what Christ did at the cross wasn't enough? Paul is saying, is Paul saying that it was revealed for you to fight demons? But you're finding us with our mis. Fight. And ask you a question. If Christ is in you, and you are seated in the heavenly places, aren't you above witchcraft? Aren't you above Ephrosawaka? Aren't you above poverty? Then why are you fighting? Aren't you above failure? Then why are you fighting? Hey! Yet somebody without Christ is seated somewhere and they are thinking big of how to reach the moon. Somebody is busy who is not in Christ. They are planning for the world. Who is not in Christ? They are planning for the Planning for the one whom Christ is Christ is in me. Christ, yet they are planning for you. <laughs> These guys can build a tower that goes to heaven and God says, man, God has to come down. These guys have something that they can build. And God knows that if, if I don't come, these guys are going to come. They are building something for you because they believe in God for rent. These guys are planning for the world. You are, pla you, you are planning for rent. But Christ is in you. Hey, they have the earthly wisdom and they are planning for the world. You have Christ in you and you believe in God for it. But Christ is in you. Shakata. We are here. You are above? Who is above? But Christ is in you. Now, talking about the, it's not, it's the purpose of the Paul is saying, you get off this level of business, mania, and girls are cars, mania. No. Think big. Think big. Glory to God. Amen. Somebody one time, but I was, I was seeing the progressive revelation. Somebody, I know somebody, I won't mention her name because I like mentioning her name. So she was, she was busy crying. <laughs> <laughs> then, then she remembered, then, yes, work out. Christ in me, love. Christ. She stopped what? Right. Now, the purpose of the mystery is revealed in that dimension. But how come? She doesn't say, never now. You mean, you mean that Christ in me can't think for the world? What is that thing that makes her not think for the world and stop crying for this stupid thing? You understand what I'm saying? And we're still shallow. We don't think big. You don't think big. You're planning where your next meal is going to come. You're planning for where the next rent is going to come. But Christ, the hope of glory, man, to Zele Baketa, you are above. No, you're not above. Elon Musk is above. Because he's planning for the world. Does he think of rent? Guys are there sitting and they are thinking, how do we reach the moon? Someone right now as I pray, I mean, as I talk, they are thinking of getting a computer that can get into your mind and begin to read you. There are those right now as I pray right now, Cyrus, they are not pray. As I talk right now, they are planning of that thing that can enter into you and kill every disease. They are planning without Christ. Hallelujah. They are planning without... But the monocolins, one child, shakata, sipako, rent. Ren, Julius, eh? wait a minute, Julius, <laughs> Julius, Master, <laughs> Julius, Julius, ah! God, somebody say, God forgive us. But people will look for you when they see the wisdom of God in you. Hallelujah. 
That's the purpose. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time they bring a suggestion box you're in a meeting, they ask us, what for you? Keep, keep me quiet. You can't even say anything. Have you ever seen guys in a meeting? They don't contribute anything. In the office, in the team, in, 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 in every team. Uh huh, okay. Aaron, what do you say? Give us something. Let's go with what they have said, eh? <laughs> Ah, they're, not, they're, not, they're not here. Yet the manifold wisdom is in you. The intelligence, Sophia, wisdom, Sophia, the intelligence of God in all of its varieties is in you. God is saying the manifold wisdom, the manifold is the, the variety of God is in you. When they look at marriage, they should see the wisdom of God in you. When they see your finances, they should see, look at the wisdom of God. You should be able to display the wisdom of God in all of its varieties. Come to money, wisdom of God. Come to marriage, wisdom of God. Come to raising children, wisdom of God. That is the reason for the purpose of the mystery. They didn't get me there. The Amplified Version says, the purpose is that through the church, the complicated, many-sided wisdom of God in all its infinite variety and innumerable aspects might, know, but might now be made known to the angelic rulers and authorities, principalities, and what? And power. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why the church exists. This is why planet you exist. Amen. That the manifold wisdom. Now some of us can do it. Someone doesn't know what I'm saying. Hey, you, what is wisdom? Hallelujah. Christ, the wisdom. No, now they're getting it. Now they're getting it. Christ, the wisdom, and the power of God. So that we may make that, 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 that the manifold wisdom of God. Who is that wisdom? Christ might be made known to the demon. Oh. Okay, let's get serious. To poverty? Can you just get serious? To rent? To the principalities in the heavenly places. Where is your battle? Now, you're either seated in Christ, I mean, seated in the heavenly places, and manifesting the wisdom of God to the principalities, for you're just seated. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, are you seated in the heavenly places or are you manifesting the wisdom of God to the angelics in the heavenly places? Where are you? Hallelujah. Somebody saying manifesting. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I you. So now seated. Now she's beginning to manifest. Hallelujah. I love my seed. Clap for my seed. Marvelous. But. That is the purpose. Hallelujah. A rat, a rat comes. I am Christ in me. The rat? <laughs> now, how do I approach the process of God? I'm not saying, it. I'm not denying that they come, right? I'm not denying that poverty comes, right? I'm not denying. But if you know that you're above, you don't go as a vic you don't go with a victimized mentality against poverty. You go with a victor's mentality against poverty. If you if if sickness hits your body, you don't go with a victimized mentality. I am sick, Father, heal me. No, you come with a victor's mentality, Father. By your stripes, I am what because you are above it. Yeah. After that, you've mentioned that it is done. Go and believe God for the world. Because you've come to manifest the principalities. If we have principalities in Satan and they are, they, but do you know that one of the principal? <laughs> no, no, no. For you guys who don't pray for Satan, I hope you guys are praying for Satan. If somebody prays for Satan and they don't understand the principality in this thing, one of the things that it, uh, one of the uh, the symbolism of the principalities in Satan, Daniel Gimba, in Satan, he has fashioned the principality. He has fashioned them to think small. You look at the buildings. It's small. It's hard to find a building that can sit in the in center. It's hard. Look at the businesses. It's 
And you think, this, you think the principality doesn't know what they're doing? Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. I wonder if you, you can walk around set and get me a, a building that can sit 100 people. Let's go to the churches. <laughs> you guys have gone far. You go to the churches. Hallelujah. Now, with the manifold wisdom of God, some of us are thinking big. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Because I have, I, have, I have come to understand, because I'm here to, to make manifest the wisdom of God and say, you principality in Satan, hallelujah, we don't think small. We think big. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But, we don't take the battle in the heavenly places. We, we fight from here, right? He says, I am, I, am, I am seated in Christ. Rightfully so, right? Because that is his position in Christ. Except that he's here by the word, by the flesh. That, that whatever is bound on earth must be already what is bound in heaven. Whatever is loose on earth must be already what is already loosed in heaven. So he is in heaven. He knows the end in mind. He comes back here to bind what's already bound in heaven, because he's seated, he has gone there. I don't think what I'm saying. Now, you can even pray and say, what is the principality that is attacking my area? What is the principality that, that is attacking Satan? You want to go and win souls and do as promised, but you have no clue of what is in charge. But Christ is in if your crisis is in you, then why are they coming? Hey, shake it up. I'm, I'm, I'm going very far. Am I making sense? So, guys, listen to me. Christ is, Christ is not in, Christ has not been given to you to get married. Christ hasn't been given you to get a job. It's much bigger than that. Hallelujah. It's much bigger than that. Now, I am not saying, see the, see the problem with this, this I, I'm going to put a disclaimer. I am not saying that you don't use the weapon to fight against divorce and marriage. Now, don't get me wrong. All I'm saying is that you are above the earthly. Don't come saying, Father, Christ in me, Julius, 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 Christ in me, the hope of glory, Julius, Julius. No. Uh-uh. God didn't give you Christ for that. Is Christ flesh? Where is Christ sitting? Where is the action? Is the action physical or spiritual? Spiritual. So, he says, set your mind on where Christ is. What are those things? Are they physical or spiritual? Then why are you believing for God, God for things that, uh, that are physical? Now, am I saying that you shouldn't drive a car? No. No. That's just a weapon for you to execute what God has given to you. I've just told you, if a non-believer is thinking of how to transform the world, planning for you, who's supposed to plan for the other? Amen. Amen. Ah. Ah. But let me, let me prophesy. Everywhere you go, men and women shall recognize you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because that's already in you. Because it says, the manifold wisdom may be made manifest. I mean, make known. Eh? That is to recognize. So in other words, God is already saying that the wisdom of my wisdom, they shall recognize my wisdom in you. Hallelujah. Amen. So may men recognize you Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now move from where you are to a place where people begin to recognize you. That's where I want to come. Amen. Am I really making sense? Amen. Hallelujah. When they look at your marriage, they will see wisdom. Amen. When they see the mannerisms of your children, they will see wisdom. When they see your finances, they will recognize wisdom. For all this is the manifold wisdom in all its colors. Hallelujah. So God wants to use the church to show his power and authority. That's why the message version says, listen to me, through, through Christians like yourselves gathered in churches, this extraordinary plan of God is becoming known and talked about even among angels. That even the angels, okay, now you see the bigger picture, that even the angels talk about it. Hey, have you, have you seen? Hey, 
Da ju sim că da va șalu. Da va gusta mă cort. Nu, no, they are coming to see Sharon singing. Shakata. And Pia was like, They'll be like, which, which wisdom is that? That's not, that's not wisdom. Hallelujah. Wisdom, no, knowledge is accumulated facts. Right? Wisdom is applied knowledge. Yeah? That's wisdom, right? That... I have accumulated the facts of finances. I need to tithe. I need to... But it, okay, so I need to tithe. I need to give my first fruits. I need to help the poor. I've just given you ways that you're going to get to each other. That's three. That's knowledge. Wisdom is applying. You give your tithe. You give your first fruits. You help the poor. Is that wisdom? Hallelujah. Isn't that wisdom? But how many are doing it? That somebody can't even, they've given you 1,000 shillings, you can't get 100 shillings. That's, and you want to manifest the manifold wisdom of God in you. <laughs> You've gotten 10,000, you can't even remove. Guys, I don't, but let, let, let me be serious about finances. I don't want to raise a generation of people who are failing here. Hallelujah. Somebody has blessed you with 10,000? You can't get 1,000? Somebody has left you money for home? A meza. You can't even get and have your covenant with God? 10%? Somebody woke up and said, Eva Nangi, I like you, and they gave you 20,000. Now, you have just eaten the seed of where God would have used to plant another and bring more. But you are, manifel- you, you are, you are making manifest the manifold wisdom of God, Christ in Mineta, Olimbi, Hallelujah. And I'm to and finish. Verse 12, I love verse 12. He says, that this is very important, that Christ, eh? in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Somebody repeat after me. With, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Now, with that, you come back and say, I have boldness. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. This scripture is enough to set you free. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, in whom we have boldness. The boldness of the Spirit that I can be praying and I say, the boldness of the Spirit that was at me because I would have jumped. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My God. My God. Through faith in Him. Ay, yeah, yeah. Ay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world, the Bible says. And this is the COVID. This is the victory that overcomes even our what? Our faith, eh? You scholars. I, I, I like saying this thing. First John 5, 4. Get serious. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, I thought, you see, when I said, Christ in me, I, I all said the hope of glory. You like saying it. But I'm saying, this is the victory that overcomes the world. Our faith. Faith is the victory that overcomes sickness. Your faith in Christ is the victory that overcomes poverty. Your faith, not the mystery. Your faith, not the mystery. Your faith in Christ is what overcomes sickness. sickness. So Christianity has been, guys, listen to me, I'll say it again. Christianity has been made so easy and simple for us. It is easy. All you have to do is what? Believe. Why? Because our faith in Him is the victory that overcomes the world. If there is something in your life right now, I'm telling you right now that your faith, your faith, your faith in Christ is the victory. Not you. The fact that you have faith already, that's already victory enough. So you're working with victory. Your faith in Christ is the victory that has come the world. Now, I want, to, I want to say something, and I want to provoke you because for me I mean it. The world is yet to see. Somebody said it. The world is yet to see. Just one man who dares to believe God. Akamati, ANC. 
Only that one man who dares to believe God. Only one man. Hallelujah. The world is waiting to see you. Only there to believe. The problem is we are seeing rent in front of us. We are seeing the next meal in front of us. Come on, the world is here to see you if you dare to believe. If you dare to believe that you are above only, the world is here to see. If you dare to believe that you are more than a conqueror, the world is here to, to see. If you dare to believe that you are the head and not the tail, the world is yet to see. Hallelujah. What do you believe in? What do you believe? Let me ask myself, and I, I, I must ask a question, because some of us are letting that one take our thing. That's not nice. Hallelujah. What do you believe in? Wait, what do you really believe? If they open your eyes, what do you believe? Do you really believe? What are you, what are you believing? Now, for me, I'm believing God for the world. Not believing, I have believed God for the world. What are you believing in? Because what you see gives you what? The language for it. How you pray shows me what you see. Father, heal me. That, that means you see sickness. <laughs> Father, I'm poor, man. I need money. You see, you see poverty. <laughs> That's it. What you see gives you the language. Am I lying? What you see gives you the... Your vision gives you the language. And language gives you power. This is the language that God said, if I don't confuse this guy's language, I'll build the tower. So your language, the language you have, can build anything you need in this world. Just have the right language. I'm the head and not the tail. That can build you the world. Hallelujah. <laughs> but let me tell you something. The world is yet to see our love in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Because I have dared to believe. I have believed for the world, by the way. Me, I'm going for the world. Hallelujah. The Amplified Version says, In whom, because of our faith in him, we dare to have the boldness, courage, and confidence of free access and unreserved approach to God with freedom and without fear. Hallelujah. But this is what I want to say, the NLT Version says, Because of Christ, our faith in him, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. Coming. Do you know, some of you even fear the presence of God. <laughs> Father, I am come. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because that's how you used to enter your father's house. That's it. <laughs> come boldly, confidently. Father, I have come, Masela Bakota. Healing is my prayer. Provision is my prayer. Hallelujah. That's how you enter the presence of God. <laughs> if that's how you enter the presence, and that's how you saw your father, but when your husband comes, <laughs> sit again there. Hey, so that's why you enter with a victim's mentality. Enter with a victor's mentality. Hallelujah. You don't come as one who is wanting to conquer. You come as a conqueror in the presence of God. Don't come as one who is sick. Come as one who is healed. Don't come as the poor guy. Come as what? Healed. As the poor guy is entering the hotel. And 
telling me that that's how you, 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 you enter boldly and confident in the presence of God? In the Raider Hotel, just a good Raider Hotel? Can, can I teach you how to enter the presence of God? You first go to the Raider Hotel, you'll see. Physical. You will end, oh, sorry, first start with entering the presence of God. God is the Son of God. You're going to see right there, very small. By the way, you're going to see it very small. It will be very, that's my sermon next. It will be very small. Because you've entered in the presence of the Lord, you've gone to the one who created right away. Yeah? <laughs> now, okay, now let's grab your 10,000 and go and ask for a drink without looking. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know the 10,000 and read your and read your bread of life. <laughs> you are looking for a job, but you don't come as one who is jobless. Go as a CEO in the presence of God. Because am I making sense? Cause it's you. Provoke. I'm, I'm, I'm telling some of you. Provoke yourself. If if you want to eat food, I'm giving an example. I'll use food just to make us understand. If you want to eat food of 50, 60, 70,000, go on. One, I'm, I'm not saying do that every week. One time get that money and go and provoke yourself. Go to the hotel and sit. Hallelujah. Amen. Get the okay, milkshake and, 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 uh, and pizza. Take it and get your 50 bob and sit and eat. Hallelujah. Even call guys. That is the action of faith. Amen. Christ in the name of glory. Christ in the name of Can't even go to the hotel for a meal. Anyway. But am I making sense? Now, I want to show you the message version because that's why I want us to come. But uh, it's too long, but it is okay. But are we enjoying it? I've gone very far. When we trust in him, we are free to say whatever needs to be said, bold to go wherever we need to go. That if you're free with Christ, when you trust in him, you are free to say whatever you want to say. Eh? Amen. So they are making, you're not free. <laughs> you're not free. <laughs> Don't fear to say whatever you want to say. Whatsoever you ask in my name, he says what? Ask, I'll give you. Whatever. Don't fear to ask big when you come in the presence of God. Ask big. That's why I've asked God for the world. Hallelujah. Some of you fear to ask for the world. Some of you fear to ask Satan. Go there, don't even ask for. Okay, the father asked for soda. Go and ask for milkshake. Glory to God. Huh? Hallelujah. Ask big. Don't fear. I prepare your bread of life as one who's preparing for your world. That's me. And even said grace unto you, good people, all over the world. That is me because I've asked big. Let me let me provoke your faith. I want to provoke your faith. Let me assume that you've asked. Big. Okay, my okay, let me say I've, me. I've asked God for the world, right? I've asked big, right? What does God say? Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20. By the um, now to him who is who by in consequence, the amplified version of the action of his power that, that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do superabundantly far above all that we dare ask or think. And then he says, infinitely being mean infinitely beyond our highest prayers. Dreams and thoughts. That God is saying, if you ask for the world, I am going to give you infinitely beyond your highest prayers. But if you ask for the world, he says, ah, Adrian, aha, uh -huh, I am going to do that infinitely and beyond your highest prayers. So you ask big and God will give you beyond, infinite, your highest prayer. What's your dream? That's why I want us to dream big. Dream big. But come with boldness, the freedom of speech. Parasia in Greek. This is love made perfect. That, that we may have boldness, freedom of speech in the day of judgment. The word there is crisis. That, I'm, that, that I may be free to ask on that day of crisis. I mean, when the, the doctor comes and says, you have what, cancer. This is love made perfect. That I may have the freedom on the day of that negative report. 
So come boldly, knowing that no weapon formed against you shall what? Shall prosper. Am I making sense? Oh, that too much, but let, let, let me close. I missed some verses, but let me close. But you understand what I'm saying? Come, you have boldness. Come on. Freedom of speech. Practice it. I speak. Go big. Go beyond rent. Hallelujah. Now, I want to finish quickly. I'm done, right? I want to go back there quickly to make all men see. That's my purpose. To make all men see. To bring them to light. But my question is, how can we draw men? How can I draw men? How is Pastor Adrian going to draw the world? I've asked God for the world, right? But how am I going to draw the world? Let's go back. Isaiah 60 from verses 1. Quickly. Arise, shine, for your light has come. That same word is what in... in, in, in um, that same light is in what in... in Genesis 1 3, right? Or, or illumination. Arise and shine, for your illumination has what? Has come. Arise, shine, for your illumination, your revelation of God has come. Arise and shine. That means you can't arise. I mean, you can't until your light has what? Come. <gasps> Hallelujah. Am I making sense? So once, 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 what is it? Once that revelation, you know, there's a revelation of God that captures you. Yeah? You guys get me? And you also capture it. That something, there's that revelation of God that, like I told you, my revelation is very simple. You don't have to die to, I mean, you don't have to wait to go to heaven to be glorified like that. That's my revelation. Like, it captured me, and God captured it to me. Like, we, we captured ourselves. We captured ourselves. That's what I think about, that's what I talk about. That's my and I told you yesterday that's what I mean last week that's my knowledge in the mystery because Christ is in me I don't have to wait to go to heaven to live a glorified life because the glorified Christ lives in me that's my light my revelation of God now arise and shine Adrian for that revelation has come it has been revealed am I making sense you get it now and the glory of the Lord is written upon you the light of the gospel of the glory of God. The, revel the gospel has now been revealed to me. I see it clearly. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, then it says, verse 2, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness to the people, but the Lord will also arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. Verse 3, The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Hallelujah. Yeah. That revelation, you know, is what is going to draw the Gentiles to you. The manifestation of truth. I commend myself in the consciences of men. That once I speak this revelation, and then I fap it, and then somebody has a dream when they are fapping, I have commended myself in the conscience on the place that he has gone. Now, when I know I'm doing something, I know that he will follow me. Well, he's following the light. The revelation of God. When I, when, when, when I make Sharon see the revelation of the mystery, Sharon is just going to follow me. How am I making sense? Yes. Hallelujah. Then he says in verse 4, lift up your eyes all around and see. That's the vision that you have, right? And see. They all gather together. They come to you. Just have a vision. You, you already have the revelation. Just sit back and watch. Why is that for the very first time now, after this thing has been made sense, guys want to come for May 26th? Haven't they seen the light? And they seen the light. But somebody can walk to someone and say, but the May 26th are inviting you. Oh, no, no, could you. What is that that they are seeing? No, I have committed myself in the consciousness of men in Satan. Eh? Now, it is beyond... Christ in me, demon. Christ in me, demon. No, no, no. Father, I thank you that you've given me this mystery that I may make it manifest to all the heathens in Satan. I commend myself in the, in the courses of the Muslims. I commend myself. You understand what I'm saying? Father, introduce me right in their spirits. Now, some of the gods and invite, invite them for me to the sick. And they say, hmm, Japu Who? Why? It's the Gentiles that are coming. To my light. I commanded myself in the spirit. You can't do mobilization 
without first working on the spirits of men. You cannot do mobilization without you having the light. I don't care how good you are, they will not come because the Gentiles shall come to your light, your revelation of God, your knowledge in the mystery of the Christ. Hallelujah. And I know that when I sit there and I preach, they'll see the light. This is the guy that we've been hearing. Hallelujah. Amen. This one's Ambrose, the friend. He had me in, in watching football, but I was talking about it. I, I know that voice. In the money, I know that voice. You understand? I'm commending myself in the consciousness of men because I have the light. That's the light that I spread. It has given me the language of the Spirit. Father, I thank you that Satan is coming to the light. That is me. Amen. Commending myself in the consciousness of men because I received the word, the revelation. Am I making sense? Then he says, your sons, spiritual, shall come from afar. Eh? Father, I thank you for my son in California. <laughs> I thank you for that. That's how I pray. There's one in Soroti. Your sons shall come from a far, and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Faithfulness. Oh, Father, I thank you that Susan is nursed at my side. Thank you, brother. This is what I pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Then verse 5, it says, Then you shall see and become radiant. Your face will, 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 will smile. I mean, will, will, will shine. And your heart shall swell with joy. And I picture my heart swelling with... Masoka. Hallelujah. That's how crazy I am in my... I don't know about it. No, for you, because you go there. And you go in the prison like this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then it says... Because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you, listen, the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. Wait a minute. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to me. Why are you still broke? Light. Hallelujah. The wealth, the Gentiles who shall see my light, I mean, the, who shall come to my light, what will they come with? Well, Papa, why are you still doing it? And then you find the one with the mystery believing God for the job. She can, I'm not saying you believe God for a job. That's your faith. Hallelujah. But first you believe in God for the world. Hallelujah. Father, that job. Any, and then ask your mother to pay you. Any. Me, they pay me. Any. That's a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> any. Pay me. I've got a job. Master Sabbath, they pay me 20,000 shillings per month. Ignisus Fatus. What is that thing that gives you freedom to be paid? Now, by the way, when you get a job and you begin from children, you begin from there, right? Uh, don't get me wrong. And that's so we need to think. Hey, for me, the Gentiles are coming with their money. I know to compete with me by a house. Then when I get my money, they say, hey, but Pastor Aaron is Illuminati. I'm not, I'm not Illuminati. It is you who is Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But you get it. Can, can I prophesy? Can I prophesy Proverbs 13, 22 upon your life? The Bible says the wealth of the Gentiles finds its way eventually into the hands of the righteous for whom it was laid up for. Eh, eh. The, the wealth of the Gentiles will eventually find its way into, into your hands. Why? The light. Eh? Are you seeing it? Why are you broke? Why are you broke? I want to finish. King Solomon, when he had wisdom, the Bible says all men came to him, right? From all the earth. Because of that wisdom, the light, right? Now, the Bible says from 1 Kings 10, 24, now all the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his what? Wisdom, which God had put in his heart. Wait a minute. Which God had put in his what? Now that we Hallelujah. In his heart. Wait a minute. God put wisdom in his what? But God put also something in you. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For it is God, for it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. Wait a minute. What did God put in your heart? The light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. God put it in your what? 
Heart. God put Solomonic wisdom in his what? Heart. God put Messianic wisdom in you. You get it now? And Solomonic wisdom is lower. The one greater than Solomon is where? And is in you. And men came from all nations to hear his wisdom. And you're telling me that the Gentiles can't come to your light? With the Christ in you? I, I look at you and I say, God forgive me. How can Solomon be richer than me? Shake a Now somebody say, Job, Peter, me, I'm busy kicking the walls. How can Solomon be richer than me? You understand what I'm saying? Job, 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 Job. Hey! Christians, Christians, Solomon, with his lower wisdom, they came from the entire earth to just hear this man. Eh, see. 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 You understand? Father Job, 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 Shikata, Shikata, Shikata. The Bible says, each man brought his present articles of silver and gold, garments, armor, spices, horses, and mules every year to hear the Solomon, the wisdom of, of, of Solomon. You, let me tell you something, the greater than Solomon is in you. Amen. You can't be poor. Amen. I refuse it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Just find your light. Just find your light. Now, you may not have the job. Go in the presence. Pray for wisdom. Pray for the revelation of the Christ. Don't ask for the job. Please get me. Please get me. Please get me. Don't ask for the job. Ask for the light. Ask for the revelation of God. Because grace for that job is brought to you at the what? At the revelation of the Christ. So I don't need to ask for a job. I need to ask for revelation. Because once I get the revelation, men from all the earth. Hallelujah! Amen. Why are we still broke? Not you. <laughs> Fair unquote. Am I preaching well? Am I preaching well? This is the thing that will cause men to draw to you. Let me tell you something. It is simple. It may take you one week. It may take you six months. It may take you one year. If you want to fast, fast. To the end that Christ is revealed. How that revelation of God. I can go anywhere. And what I began preaching. People are hearing me. Five years you're going to say. Pastor is Illuminati. No. The Gentiles are coming with them. What? I have, guys right now, I have guys that I can give a call right now. And they send me money. I'm serious by the way. I am. Why? Because they sit under the messianic wisdom. Ah, ah. So go in the presence of Christ, I mean of God. Hallelujah. So my responsibility is to cast light. Your responsibility is to cast light. Because once they see the light, because they're in darkness, once they see the light, they will come. The Gentiles will come to your light and they'll carry their what? Money. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I am done. I'm really, really done. So I want to challenge you. With the purpose of the mystery, think big. I can guarantee you with this someone that if you went back home and started going in the presence of God and stopped praying for those things, uh, 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 no. light. Father, I pray for the revelation of the gospel. Start by saying, Father, open. May this word open to me. Okay? May the word open to me. That's all you need. If you to fast, let this take you in the presence of God. Pray and fast. It will take you one week. Pray, it will take you one. But I'll tell you something. You will come after three or four and say, God, Pastor Adrian, what you said, right hotel. Come on, I saw so big cheap now. Right the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's this guy. Yeah. So, so does what? You can laugh at me. Hallelujah. But that's my revelation. My daughters are going to take me out. Hallelujah! Yeah. Hey! And I'll first take them out. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, I am done. And 